What's going on, y'all? Bud Elliott here, back again for the Nolcast. This is our preview of the conference game against Cal, which sounds really, really weird to say as somebody who's been covering this program for about 20 years now. Uh, conference game against Cal, and we appreciate you guys staying with the channel, even though this team flat out sucks right now, but uh, they're trying to improve that. We will see if they can. I got my friend from Twitter, Mike Foyles, who grew up uh, watching Cal. Mike, just f fill us in, man. What, what kind of what, what, what's your background? And uh, I, I will say this guy knows Cal in and out. So I, I, I think y'all will enjoy his insight. No, uh, I appreciate it. I grew up going to just about every the season tickets every year. Dad went to Cal. Um, you know, I, I still have those memories as a nine year old watching Marshawn Lynch drive around the stadium in a golf cart after beating Washington in overtime. Um, you know, and then. For undergrad, I actually went to Illinois because it's impossible to go to Cal. Shout out Tom Fernelli, your cover three uh, up color guest, other star on the show. But, you know, I've just, it's nuts what's happened. There's a lot of people my age, and I think you're starting to hear from them on Twitter over the last, you know, month or so. But people, there's a lot of people like me that grew up and they were so cool when we were kids because you got Marshawn Lynch, you got Deshaun Jackson, you got Keenan Allen. I was a little too young to really appreciate Aaron Rodgers, but we just can't quit Cal. The, the school didn't take me. Other Bay Area teams, professional teams, have had way more success in the last decade or two. But here I am, still a diehard Cal fan. And as bad of a start as Florida State's had to the season in regards to their expectations, it's kind of the polar opposite for Cal. There's, there's a lot of happy fans right now. No doubt. I mean, they're, they're off to to an excellent start. Beat San Diego State last week. Beat uh, beat Auburn on the Plains, which was that was wild to watch. Uh, just the the catches the Cal receivers. I, I was like, okay, Cal's couple top receivers are out, and these backups are just we're just gonna make circus catches. Okay, over and over again. This, this is this is fantastic. Um, and then they won. I forgot who the opener was against. UC Davis. Okay, so I mean, I don't know. At, at times they've been okay, but at times they've been uh, you know maybe not quite as good. So for our, our listeners at home, first, we do want to thank them for supporting the legendary home loans team. Chad has done such an awesome job. I've done two mortgages through him. We are closing in on almost 600 NOLCAST loans through Chad, which is an awesome partnership. 844-FSU-LOAN. 844-FSU-LOAN is the number to call. Man, I'm hoping for a win this weekend because Chad, I, I need a happy Chad in, in the sponsor group chat. Like, like I, I just, uh, Sad Chad is, 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 is bad Chad. I, I need happy Chad, so. Uh, Mike, I, I do hope that, that that Florida State gets the win this weekend so that Chad can be happy. Uh, can you tell us about what Florida State fans need to know about this Cal team? Yeah. Um, and, I mean, you know, you've I, – I think Cal's reputation under Justin Wilcox, this team really falls under that brand, uh, probably a lot more than last year's team, where if you look at, you know, especially two of Wilcox's best teams, and, they, you know, seven and five teams, one year they won the bowl game 2019 – it's all revolving around a really strong defense. And this defense is structured exactly how Wilcox and Peter Sermon's defense are always structured. Their middle linebackers have been in incredible. Teddy Buchanan, Kadu Lawave, um, you know, first for the first three games, that's kind of always been their centerpiece. They kind of run, it's it's kind of more of a, a four, two, five, but it's technically a two, four, five with your with your edge guys at outside linebacker. But the difference this year is it's, you know, back in 2018, 19, we had a combo. It was Evan Weaver, Jordan Kanashik. And this year's group, it's really, I think you got two guys that are going to be pushing for, for all ACC for sure with Kato Luave and Buchanan, at least from what we've seen for the first three games. And it's that combined with phenomenal secondary play. Um, you know, the amount of interceptions they already have. Noel Williams, I think, already has four or five. He's the, one of the corners for Cal. So it, it's really – and I think where I've been a little surprised by by their defense is, number one, I didn't expect, you know, them to be so strong at the linebacker spot, but they're getting more pressure. Then that's sometimes always been the problem with, with our – whenever Cal's defense is either okay but not that good or good but not great, it's because they can't really get pressure with four guys. And David Reese has barely played a snap all season. He's supposed to be their best pass rusher, yet they pressured Auburn nearly 50% of Auburn snaps. And they didn't always, you know, they're good with their blitzes, but Cal was not depending on blitzes. They were getting there with four. Um, so, you know, the other edge guys, Xavier Carlton, Ryan McCullough, have been really strong. So, you know, 
that's really the part of Cal's team that, you know, that is good and should be one of the best, one of the better defenses in this conference. Um, I think that's the first thing you want to know about Cal. Will Cox, as you said, has a reputation for just being an excellent defensive football coach. And I, I don't know, like every time on Twitter that Cal has a year that's not so good, people are like, oh, they need to fire Justin Wilcox. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I watch a lot of football. I think Wilcox is a is a good football coach at a place that's not – maybe not not always super easy to win, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some, obviously, academic challenges getting getting kids in. and um, I, I don't imagine Cal has, like, crazy NIL, but I know they have some, actually. I, mm-hmm. I don't know if, if you can talk about that at all, but, like, I've seen – They've been pretty competitive in the space relative to kind of where you know where they normally stand in college football. It seems you were on it last year. I remember when they were doing the the win totals uh, the beginning of the year, and you know this is after twenty twenty two was was Cal went four and eight. That's kind of when the Pac twelve took a step up. Um, and the previous twenty twenty one, Cal went five and seven. Now they would have got to a bowl if they didn't if they weren't the one team that had COVID impact their 2021 season, oh, right. they, the Arizona game, they lost by one score and they've had, they didn't even know who was going to take the trip. But, you know, I think that was a point where the vibes were very negative. It, it kind of, you know, we all love Wilcox because he, he didn't say yes to Oregon. I, I don't know all the dynamics that went into that, but he said yes to Cal and stayed at Cal. And, and then those years were, were, it, it was really disappointing. Um, but, but the NIL, it's been, I think there's a big push here. I think, especially with Cal fans seeing just the threat of what could have happened if they couldn't, you know, find a conference to at least kind of put themselves in a position just to remain in, you know, the power four, you know, we'll see how everything continues to shake, but it felt like, you know, I don't, I won't, I don't know what Cal has, you know, one of those one giant donor, like you always like to have, you know, with like the Tyson foods guys at Arkansas or of sure. course, Phil Knight at, for Oregon. But um, I think Cal's completely outperformed what I would have expected um, in that regard, given, you know, yeah, I mean, Cal fans have been, uh, the fan base kind of been dissed over the last 10 years. They're having a huge resurgence on Twitter right now. But, you know, the last couple of years, you look at, you know, and obviously it's like a free agency, you know, you lose guys, you get guys. But the last two years, you can't convince me that they're not a huge positive as far as a huge net positive, as far as what they've done in the transfer portal. And uh, I think that's, um, that's something Cal's found a niche there with guys like David Reese that I mentioned, you know, guys that, uh, you know, whether it's guys take going down a level from a really, you know, pretty talent stock team to go get a chance to, to compete, to start at Cal, or it's the guys coming up like Teddy Buchanan, the linebacker. He was at UC Davis, you know, Cal recruited him, Back when he was in high school, he was an all-conference player at UC Davis. And right now, I mean, he, he's among their best players. So I, I think that they've done a lot of good there, which I could not have expected. Is So we know the defense is, is a good defensive football team. Is there a spot on the defense that either because we haven't seen enough or, or perhaps because of, of the opponents played so far that is either untested or, or maybe just less sure about? Yeah, I think, um, well, sometimes it's hard to tell because, you know, you were still trying to understand what to make of Auburn, you know, it's uh, Auburn is like kind of this, this enigma right now, because I, I would have thought that they would have given Cal a little more trouble on the line of scrimmage, you know, like in the run game. And that's where I was surprised how well Cal was able to get after Thorne uh, in the pass rush, because I think coming into the year, we all would have said the defensive line, particularly kind of that defensive, the, the, the two out of that two, four, five front, we would have figured that that's the group with number one, not like that much top end talent, but also, I mean, you look at the guys that are playing like Aiden Kiana Ina, he was, uh, he wasn't really in the rotation for Notre Dame, but he's been getting a lot of, uh, you know, snaps pretty much as a starter for Cal. TJ Bowlers wasn't really in the rotation for Wisconsin. Same deal. He comes over to Cal. Um, we should get Ricky Correa back, who's a returning starter, and Nate Burrell is a solid player too. But that that would be one of the areas that I would think if you're really good on the offensive line, um, you know, either that or or just kind of you know not being able to get a pass rush. I think those were kind of that that one area where you know a really good offense might you know be able to to deal with Cal with you know that I think the pass rush and just being 
we don't really have the dudes on the line of scrimmage. I wouldn't, at least I didn't think coming into the year. So that area of the team will remain untested. Just a, a, a quick preview for you right there. Florida State's offensive line has uh, has been both bad and also injured at the same time. So it's a nice little parlay they're running in Tallahassee of like extreme suck uh, right now with the offensive line. So I, I you're going to have another week where you don't really know maybe just how good the D-line is due to uh, – like I watched the Auburn game. Um, Florida State's playing similar to that, I, mm. I would say. Like they'll turn some guys loose. They'll just not block anybody at times. Some of the technique is – is a little baffling communication is lacking and then you also have guys going down with injury so yeah. other than that they've been really good up front in tallahassee this year and uh we'll have to see if that can continue i am hopeful that they're able to get one of the two starting tackles back in this one uh last week that was a freaking disaster so you had already lost buyers in practice right before the uh, boston college game on the i think the friday before the bc game that's their starting right tackle mm-hmm. who played well against Georgia tech and then uh, literally in warm-ups against Memphis, the uh, first-team All-ACC, Darius Washington, gets hurt. Uh, so I was like, this is annoying, but it's understandable they're, they're going to throw screens for like the first quarter against Memphis just, just like until they can kind of figure out what the – I guess what works, but nothing really worked. So uh, that was uh, that. Was that. Do you want to take a time here to thank Gruity, Matt Lewis, an awesome, awesome sponsor of ours. All your business support needs, HR solutions, payroll, anything you might need to optimize your business, congruityhr.com slash Knowles is the link to visit. Give Matt a shout. Does an awesome job. I think we got nine or 10 Knollcast businesses hooked up with them now. And uh, uh, as far as I know, everybody's renewed. So I'm extremely excited. You know, w- once people join, join on with Matt, they like what he provides. It, it's it's not a hit it and quit it type situation here. So uh, congruityhr.com slash Knowles, Matt Lewis, we'll hook you guys up. Uh, Mike, let's let's talk a little bit about Cal's offense here. Uh, so th- this is kind of a more interesting battle to me because while Florida State had another loss last week, I will say the defensive line actually came to play and for the most part gave Memphis fits up front. Now Memphis was able to kind of get some some guys open as far as underneath with some of the action stuff and and take advantage of some of the communication errors that, that Florida State has had this year in the uh, the second and third levels of the defense, but the, the defensive line that, that Pete Thamel, uh, a lot of folks saw, uh, thought they were like really elite and Thamel's like the best defensive line in the country, which I think we thought they were really good. That surprised me that he he thought they were like the, that the scouts he talked, he thought they were the best in the country. Uh, that, that D line largely showed up last week though. So if they haven't quit, if they're still playing hard, I am curious how much they can potentially affect Cal's offense, which, I like to my eye I looked good sometimes. And then I went back and I watched all the snaps against San Diego state. And I was like, shit, yeah. like San Diego state's getting a lot of pressure on Cal. Like, like that I did not expect, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you were on this in fall camp because I came in, I mean, you know, it was one of those position groups that you look at, you know, if everyone's healthy, you're looking at the group and like they need, they should be better in every, you know, you're thinking through your head on paper, either they're just as good or they get better. And maybe that's not always completely accurate because, you know, there's the guys last year were starting for a reason, but they did a really good job in the transfer portal on who they brought in. And then, you know, season starts and they haven't had Sayopi Vadikani, who's their best offensive guard, their big run blocker. And then they didn't have, they haven't had their center, Will McDonald. There's a chance they get both of those guys back. Now it's offensive line. We'll see how quick, I, we'll see who's actually starting because then the like Cal's a bye week after Florida State. But the offensive line has been, I mean, it was a really poor first game against UC Davis. I mean, the, the calling card of Mike Blesh's offense and what they were last year is against teams they were better than or just, you know, teams that weren't great up front, not necessarily Florida State, but they were be able to just run the ball on them really effectively and let Jada not be the star. And that was kind of, it was a lot of that, a lot of RPO stuff. And against UC Davis, they weren't running the ball well. Their blitz pickup was poor. And then against Auburn, um, you know, it, it was it in the second half. I think it was a you know decent first half. They couldn't run the ball at all. And then Auburn really started blitzing a lot in the second half. And if you you know just watching some of the tape of that, it was like their blitz pickup has been really poor this season. Now the difference was against San Diego State because even the guys that they have right now, I mean, the guys filling in for McDonald and, and Vatikani, you still have Matt Wyckoff, who's a returning starter, who almost lost his position and then um, almost lost his starter role. And then they also have Bastion Sweeney, who's now the center. 
they're kind of trying to figure out who's center and who's guard. It was, um, but at least against San Diego State, they looked like what I would expect them to look like as far as running the ball because they did gash San Diego State for nearly 300 yards rushing. And at least for me as a fan, you know, I know what their identity is. That was a very welcome sight, you know, to be able to just – that's kind of what they should have done against UC Davis. So on that end, it was very encouraging because you're like, okay, I don't know if Wyckoff was playing hurt or something. Or I don't know. Regardless, they're, they're running the ball the way they should. I don't know what that will mean against Florida State, but it means that's a welcome sight for the rest of the year, particularly when your best player is Jaden Knott. But the one thing they were just really poor against, uh, really poor at against San Diego State was the blitz pickup. It was as bad. San Diego State, uh, just I was looking at some of the numbers yesterday on PFF. It was Cal got sacked six times and they they were all from blitzes. Like mm-hmm. it was all blitz. Yeah. And it, you know, one it might be on the running back on the first play and then there's something else, but it was it's it was it wasn't necessarily like they were just getting beat and uh you know four man it looked like communication stuff it, yes that's what it like, looked like to me i was like i was a little concerned for uh shoot uh, mendoza for mendoza Portland. yeah i was still that that's my biggest... are, like some of these shots yeah. are coming clean like, yeah. like like bro nobody touched that guy <laughs> i i was watching i was watching because it started at you know because i'm here in charlotte where the game starts at like 10 30 and uh, my girlfriend goes to bed, and then she, she wakes. She guys get me to wake up because I go to the Panthers game. She's playing the highlights. Like, why do they keep letting them hit Mendoza like that? Like, I'm like, this. She notices it, and I'm just like, it's a little concerning. And like, I I, I was not concerned with the O line coming into the year because I, I I respect what Mike Flesh did because I thought that 20, 2022 Cal line was the worst Cal offensive line I'd really seen, and I thought he really took it, turned it around last season particularly from a run blocking perspective but that's that's the one glaring problem when i when you watch the san diego state tape because it, it looks like they can kind of do whatever they wanted if they weren't you know they had a lot of holding calls too but they were really they would have a lot of plays they just gashed san diego state on the ground but there were a lot of free blitzers and i think you know that started showing up second half against Auburn, and it continued last week in San Diego State. So it's certainly something you got to keep an eye on in this game. So with a lot of these tempo teams this year, we, we've seen more variable tempo due to the helmet comms, and, and uh, in some cases, like the coach just having his kind of head buried in, in the tablet. Um, what have you seen from Cal this year with, with tempo? I know last year they they, they tried to be pretty quick mm-hmm. uh, when they could. No, for sure. I know it's uh it's been hard to figure out, right? Some of the tempo stuff. Yeah. I know I was hearing you talk about it on cover three. But I, I and I think I think the way the pace they're playing now is is kind of more typical of Wilcox's teams. Mike Flesh probably, you know, because last year they did play faster. Now I will say this year it's clear it's pretty clear their defense has taken a big step up this year. So like I'm curious if the tempo that we've seen for three weeks you know, one close game, two, you know, games that were close for a half. I would imagine it's somewhat consistent. I, I think the, I think the helmet, you mentioned like the helmet comms, it's a big deal for not turning the ball over. And right. last year, even though they were suddenly scoring 30 points a game, Cal turned the ball over, what, 2.2 times per game last year. And this year they've turned the ball over maybe, I think, what, twice now in three games. So, you know, I do think taking care of the ball being, you know, being plus in the turnover margin, that's how Wilcox would probably prefer to play. And he'd probably prefer something not crazy fast so that his defensive starters can can be playing a higher percentage of the game. So I think this is probably around what we'll continue to see, but I'm sure there'll be variances game to game. Have you seen anything different from Mendoza this year compared to last year? Yeah, I thought I thought. I mean, that first half against Auburn, you know, it was one of those situations where, I mean, man, anyone who's heard Mendoza talk, you're just like, I really like this kid. He's perfect for Cal. You know, he's perfect for Cal. He uh, completely made their offense so much better once he came in last year against Oregon State. And I think um, you looked at Chandler Rogers' stats. I remember when Chandler Rogers came to Cal. You, 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 oh, from you, North Texas, yeah. From North Texas. who And they almost got Chandler the year before, so – I'm, it was kind of kind of a little surprising that he decided to come to Cal, given what Mendoza had kind of accomplished the year before as a redshirt freshman. Um, but I, I think 
as much as Cal, you know, as much as I respect Chandler Rogers, you know, you figured from like a leadership perspective, continuity perspective, you kind of were hoping to see Mendoza win the job. It just seemed like, you know, if he's able, but it, it clearly looked like the staff couldn't make their mind up yet. And it was clearly um, pretty neck and neck. And UC Davis really didn't, you know, it was, it was such an ugly performance on offense that, you know, the best thing Mendoza could have done is what he did in that first half at Auburn. He really played, you know, pretty much perfect football for that first half. Um, and it's not like they were able to run the ball that well. So a lot of that, a lot of those drives, it was really just him settled in making plays in a really difficult environment. And I thought, I thought he picked up on that in San Diego state, particularly in the second half, I think even with the shots he's taken, that's how much I respect him so much more because they're clearly not a finished product on offense yet, you know, but I thought he played a really good second half against San Diego state. I think he looks more in command. I think he's taking care of the ball better. You know, if you look back on that bowl game against Texas tech, but Cal wanted to win that bowl game. Like that wasn't one of those, you know, they have plenty of guys in the portal, like, you know, not playing, but, I mean, a lot of their main, a lot of their key contributors were playing. And really the only real difference in that game was Mendoza turned the ball over four times. Yeah. Now he got knocked around early. It looked like he was playing through some kind of, you know, pain. But I think him taking the well, the way he's taking care of the ball this year is probably the biggest difference. And I think he's just, there's just always that, you know, next leadership step, all that stuff as going, especially going from redshirt freshman who didn't have the job until week seven last year or whatever to, you know, this year. It's just, it was, it's good for Cal that he won it early. How close to a hundred percent do you think God is? I, I think this is going to be the healthiest Cal has been because I, I do think they were, I don't want to say like holding out players, but I think there was a lot of like guys we thought we might see last week. And even guys they that dress like Ott was dressed, warmed up, ready to go against San Diego State. And then you see him, and he's got his jersey off, but he's laughing and like like as almost he tries almost he tried to deke the broadcast. Sure. Like I do think, um, I I think it's hard to tell because I didn't think he looked too healthy against Auburn, but you know, I, I'd say healthy enough to play like himself, and then he gets a bye week. Yeah. And I'd say the same thing for guys like David Reese on the edge. Um, you know, Correa is likely going to play. I'm just the biggest the thing I'm curious about is their offensive line situation with with Vatikani and McDonald. That makes sense. M Merriweather and, uh, and and Gray is not not as big of a deal given who else stepped up. Seems I I mean I think I think you know at least you know some of the Cal insiders think from a speed perspective that they are important. Hmm, okay. um, but I think they're from what I've heard, they're not playing this week. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, from FSU perspective, if you did go to the game, one thing you should probably do is go hit up Charlie Park Rooftop Bar. Awesome experience. Great brunch. Great cocktail list. Great date place. If you missed that, head on over to Madison Social or Township, obviously right across the street there from Doak Campbell Stadium that obviously FSU fans is hoping does not get turned into Woke Campbell Stadium, although I do think that was a hilarious wordplay uh, by Cal Twitter this week and, and, and hat tip. On that, but Matt Tops has been a great supporter of ours for, for more than a decade now, and obviously we want all of our Nolcast fans. And if you guys are now – I bet you all, some of y'all are probably parents now who are coming back for Parents Weekend, which makes me feel really old that we have people who started out listening to this uh, you know, 10 years ago, and now you guys uh, now you guys have kids who are going to the game in Doak. So it is Parents Weekend. We will see uh, a lot of up-to-date fashion and probably a bigger crowd than you would expect for uh, an 0 and 3 football team. So um, I would say defensively, Florida State is a lot better than Auburn on the defensive line. A lot better at corner. Noticeably worse at linebacker. Yeah. Like, uh, like I, think, I think Asante for Auburn is, mm -hmm. is, is pretty damn good. And the safeties are I don't really have a strong opinion on the Auburn safeties. I think Auburn is probably a little better. Just I, I've been sort of underwhelmed by what FSU has had at uh, at safety. So I, I don't know if that kind of helps mm -hmm. helps frame it for you. I mean, there's certainly the, – the reason why I was kind of concerned with, with the Cal offensive line over the summer was the one scrimmage report. It was like 11 sacks and 40 dropbacks or something. I was like, holy, like that's uh, 
but then again, you know, Cal does have a, a as you noted, a quite a good pass rush, as as Auburn found out uh, re- repeatedly. Yeah, I and I think we're we're learning more because you know, like Nick Morrow has been the guy starting at left tackle, and you know, on the surface, it's like, okay, well, this guy you know didn't play last year. He was one of those guys that I think they have a big long term investment in him. He's like a what a redshirt freshman, redshirt sophomore. He had some sure. kind of additional like red shirt in there season in there but um he was one of those guys that was you know a tight end or something in high school but he's six eight and now he's packed on all this weight but he really hasn't played much offensive line at all and a lot of you know some of the guys at bear insider think that this guy you know and this is you'll say this about a lot of guys that won't come through but they they'd see him as a future nfl player and gotcha. you know in years of course that might be two three more years of college football but I think it's interesting because, you know, then, you know, out of the transfers they brought in, you know, Victor Stoffel was another guy that he uh, has kind of competed with at left tackle. Now, um, I know Stoffel was injured at some point. I know he's, he's probably healthy now, but because because they both have played. Um, but it's been Morrow's job. Uh, I mean, he struggled against Auburn. They both did. They both had a lot had a tough time against uh, Falk. At oh, Auburn. yeah. Kevin Falk. He's yeah. a good player. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Florida State missed on him mm-hmm. at the. Uh at the final gun. And that was just kind of one of, one of those things. It, it's, I have long had a, a, like a, like a standing rule. Don't recruit the state of Alabama. If you're Florida state, because like the ones you get, it, it's probably adverse selection. Like the ones you get are probably going to bust because if Bama and Auburn really, really, really wanted them, they would find out a way to keep, them. you know, mm-hmm. like just for the most part, uh, yeah. slight exception. Like if you're playing at like a true national title level, I think sometimes you can pull a guy or if Bama and Auburn screw up a recruitment somehow, <clears throat> Jameis, right? Like you can, you can get really lucky. I mean, he was from, you know, just outside Birmingham and the guy won the Heisman. So, yeah. um, but yeah, Falk, uh, th- that's definitely a sore spot for Knowles fans. Cause he, he would be starting on this defense. Uh, yeah, for sure. And he's, he's a player. No, he, he had some plays where, you know, like I mentioned the San Diego state, every sack they had was on some kind of blitz where, at least if you're a Cal fan, you can hope that there will be improvement, number one, with it's hard to know how much continuity the, the, the guys who have now played three starts together, I, it's hard to really know what it, you know, who was playing in fall camp, like how much ground did that group have to make up playing with each other? And then how easy is it to bring in, you know, Vatikani or McDonald, or are they ready to go in and start against Florida State? But I, I will say against Auburn, Falk had a few plays where, bam, he just beat, you know, whoever we had at left tackle. So, uh, you know, I, I do think Cal mitigating, you know, the strength of Florida State's defense up front um, will be super important, whether for for turnovers, I mean, for just keeping Mendoza healthy, you know, even just like yeah. not letting them have to play hurt regardless. He's a tough kid. He always comes back in. But, you know, I think uh, limiting the amount of hits he takes, particularly from – you know, Florida State level defensive line player. You know, I mean, that'll be important for Cal. I mean, to me, on this, it, it, it's do you give Cal freebies? Yeah. Um, a, a, a lot of the Memphis touchdowns and a lot of the Memphis first downs were were sort of just like like walk in type stuff because of, of lar- largely communication issues and, and coverage bus uh, underneath. I, I I don't really think that Memphis like outran FSU. In, in any of those, I mean, nor would I really expect it to. But at the same time, I also don't have a lot of confidence that they get that fixed. So you will have to see how well Cal is able to. I mean, I guess what they run is like not pure air raid, but like there's there's aspects of it certainly. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, like how well does some of the mesh stuff work? Right, Florida State has handled that uh, terribly uh, so far this mm-hmm. year, to, to be frank. Um, you know, how how well does some of the, some of the RPO stuff work, work in FSU? They they've been hit on on some of that this year, so. Um, and what do you think about Cal as a red zone team? Cause traditionally Florida state is a team that will allow you to kind of uh, within reason march down the field. And then they, they're like, okay, it's a big, long defense, you know, a lot, lot of tip balls, a lot, lot, lot of passes batted down in the red zone, you know, denial force field goals type thing. Now this year, the strategy is not actually match, match, like match the results at, at all. And I, I do think even though they, they've played like, they've kind of just played like jerks there is some positive regression due their way. Right. Like not everybody is going to continue to score touchdowns at like a hundred percent rate. 
yeah. uh, most likely. So I'm, I'm curious about what you think about Cal as like a red zone offense. I think, um, well, I think number one, you know, just like uh, against, I, I'll be interested to see how Cal runs the ball against Florida State because obviously, um, like you mentioned, the defensive line made a, you know had a better game last week. Linebacker play, it sounds like, has not been up yeah. to their standard all year. Including, like I remember, I watched a lot of that Boston College game. I mean, they they got a pretty good. I know Castellanos runs around and stuff, but they had a pretty good rushing numbers, didn't they, in Boston College in that game? Very, yeah, they did. Okay. So I, I think that will be huge. I do think their red zone target, I mean, at least so far, it's been, um, you know, kind of their their fade target is Nisaiah Hunter, who is one of these kids who Wilcox super thrilled about because he was a highly recruited kid, but um, it's his second year. It, sound, it didn't sound like he was going to play much at all. And then, you know, Merriweather and Grays go down, and he's really, he's really, he's been their best receiver, you know, at least up, you know, through the first three games and he's got what I think three, four touchdown pass, uh, four, four touchdown catches, um, including two at Auburn. So, you know, I do think there'll be something them trying to target him um, just like they did, you know, yeah. Every game this season, it's, it's hard to tell. I mean, I, last year I thought Cal was a pretty decent red zone team. Um, I think given um, I, I will see how this game plays out. Um, and Cal really loves their kicker, Ryan Coe, but he's not he's not had the greatest start to the season. He missed a chip shot against Auburn. He's been awesome in kickoffs. He boots it, boots it deep every time, which is, is low-key nice. It's nice for because Wilcox hasn't always had the best special teams groups. And given the style he wants to play, you're like, well, we should be we should be good at special teams too, you know, if you want to be this defensive coach. But um it's hard to predict that because without knowing how they're going to run the ball, but I'll tell you that that's probably their top red zone target hunter. It also gives, if you know your kicker's going to boot it through the end zone, it does give you that like extra 45 seconds to like hit the restroom, grab an extra beer out of the garage fridge if, if you need to. Cause like, there's just not going to be a return if they're kicking yeah. it, you know, th through the end zone. So that that's, <laughs> uh, that's been the lone bright spot for FSU actually this year. They, they have uh, one of the best punters in the country and, and the kicker is, uh, I mean, the kicker's hitting 53 and 56 yarders in the rain in Ireland uh, to open the year. I was like, okay, that's uh, that's what we're doing here. Yeah. All right. That's uh, that's that's going to work. Um, as far as quarterback play for FSU, at this point, I do still think it's going to be DJU, which I don't really have any interest in watching, to be quite frank. Uh, and I don't think a lot of FSU fans do either. I know my buddies on, on one of my FSU group chats, they're like, hey, dude, is it going to be DJ? Because if so, we're, like, we're, we're not driving up to watch DJ. Like that. That's just – no offense to DJ, but we're done with that. Um, to me, it's a little more defensible position if you get at least one of the tackles back. Uh, if you get both, I can see it because he is better in practice, but you're also not really hit in practice and you're not really pressured as much in practice as you would be in a game. I mean, he looks – I don't know if he's – like what – the injury is if there is an injury, but he looks like you'll see it. He looks noticeably slower than he did at Oregon State last year. So I think something's wrong, but I don't know what. Um, he de but he definitely looks slower because he doesn't look like he doesn't look heavier or fat, but he does look slower, um, which I don't really understand why that would be. Um, if he struggles, I I do think this is the game that they would they would pull the trigger and go to Brock Glenn uh, because Glenn is a significantly better athlete than uh, than dj is so maybe you need some of that quarterback mobility there um i do think getting hakeem williams back for them was was pretty big uh, that's a you know, former five-star four-star type kid from uh, from last year's class he missed all of fall camp with an injury uh, he's also by a meaningful margin the best blocking receiver on the team and and gives like great effort there like a big kid fast not refined, but like a high effort blocker at, you know, six, two and three quarter type thing, two ten. Like like he he does help create some explosive runs with the blocking game as well. So I, I would expect him, obviously, since he's back now and he played some in last week's game and had a couple targets. Uh, that my guess is that uh, like they're gonna try to feature uh, him more because the other receivers have not have not been great. Um Benson they finally got the deep ball game on track a little bit last week as far as the just like throwing the just go deep over the top ball uh, to Benson and that they hit that for like a 60 yarder. Uh, he is. He's probably the fastest guy on the team and, and was probably the fastest guy on Bama last year. 
uh, but a very limited in terms of skill set, like not a true one. He's more of like a two that is is forced to be a one on this team. Um, as far as a pick, I uh, and, and I think obviously they'll they'll keep featuring freshman Cam Davis because Cam Davis is like uh, I'm not gonna say talent wise, but the work ethics off the charts, and he's he I mean he was a pretty high four star rated running back. He's kind of like a Maurice Jones Drew type. I mean, you know, five eight like 215, uh, really good leg drive. I've assembled a really good chart here. So this is my prediction for the game. If they get if they get both tackles, then I'm going to predict Florida State to win. Um, that would be like if so Byers and Washington both play, then I actually feel pretty good about what I saw of the defense last week. If it's only one, then I have a big question mark because I don't really know what they're going to look like at the other spot. And if neither play, then I'm going to predict Cal uh, big. I don't know if everybody can see that. If you're listening on podcasts, this is not quite as good an experience as uh, – as it is on video but that's my official i I, we will issue the official prediction during warm-ups when we actually see who is warming up because i legitimately don't know who's going to go (laughs) or not go but uh it's a pretty big deal when rob scott is as hobbled as he is and clearly like your your four slash five tackle was uh was not ready to contribute last game memphis whipped him and that that's embarrassing so um yeah, I don't think I've ever really put together a flow chart for my prediction before, but I, I, it and you wouldn't really think the tackles matter that much, but the drop off is uh, it's meaningful. <laughs> so, well, you know, Cal played DJ last year. Yeah, and DJ dropped fifty two on Cal. Now, completely different style, probably the style that Florida State imagined themselves playing this year right. with a line that could dominate because he he is really good as far as clean pocket down the field strikes. Like we even saw he had one really good throw against Boston college when I was like, they might come back here. Uh, And that's what he did. So it's not like it's the, you know, his numbers were exactly what you'd expect, like a 50 lower completion percentage, crazy yards per attempt. And he was perfect against Cal last year in that role. And I agree. He did seem more mobile last year. Like he did seem like a really good short yardage runner. Yeah. Um, I feel like I haven't seen that as much from him this year. And obviously things haven't shaken out the way that they, that they wanted to, but there's, I mean, I think Oregon state, um, I mean, they have to be pretty happy with what he did for them last year. It was, he was a perfect setup on a really good offense with an incredible offensive line last year for Oregon state. Totally. And I, I mean, Florida state fans got kind of mad when I said this over the summer, but I, I have a really good source from that Oregon state staff last year who told me that, that they were like Childs was beating him out for this year. Like, yeah. Uh, no question in their mind. But I don't think there's any real, it doesn't mean it's really a knock on you. I mean, Childs is kind of a phenom and, and beat Maryland literally all by himself uh, and, and threw for what, like 470 or whatever it was at, at Maryland. He had three picks, but he also was the entire offense. Yeah. Uh, and they're you know, mixing so, him in last year. He'd, he'd come in randomly for a drive last yeah. year for Oregon State. Right. And, mm-hmm. and was, was uh, you know, at times effective for him for sure. So, uh, it, it'll be it'll be an interesting ball game. I, I don't know exactly how Florida State plans. I mean, this is this is the best defense FSU's faced, I think, by a good bit. I mean, yeah. I, with no no disrespect intended to Boston College's defense, which has been surprisingly pretty. Like they handled Missouri okay last week. I mean, they lost, mm-hmm. but they it wasn't like Missouri dropped forty five on them. Um, you know, and, and Georgia Tech's defense is not. Uh, is not particularly great. Obviously, Memphis is, is definitely not. Uh, that, that was more. That was more like you self destructing. I, in my opinion, um, no. I just. I. I don't know. Like, can they score? You know, can FSU score fourteen? Can they score seventeen? Like, can they get the twenty? I. Yeah. Maybe, but it, it. It sort of depends on who you have in there and kind of what plan you you can cobble together. I. I think if FSU is going to win, they need to be holding Cal to something in the teens. Yeah. I, if Cal finds a way to get to like high twenties, I, I don't know that this FSU offense is really equipped to score in the high twenties right now. Yeah. You know, so we'll see, man. You got a you got a prediction for the game? Mm. I mean, score prediction. What well, do you know? What the over under is? It is it's probably yeah. buried a little bit. What is it? Probably like I actually was looking at this earlier. Oh, sorry about that. See, I shut my odd screen off because it, it, it yeah. beat too much. Um, and I, I didn't throw the heads up. What do we got here? Florida State, it is 44 and a half. If anything, just knowing how Cal plays these style of games, I mean, I guess 44 and a half is pretty low. I'm not a huge better. I love being around all, the, all my friends that do, and I just try to give them all the information. They can take it 
yeah. uh, for what they will. But, you know, Cal needs a lot. Cal's play a lot of defensive slugfest with Wilcox. Auburn didn't start off as one, but turned into one. Um, but I mean, uh, I have a good feeling for Cal of, of winning this game. I think I have, a, I think some of that comes from, I guess it, it's hard to tell because if Florida state is fully healthy at tackle, maybe that's a different story, but if they look like they did last week against Memphis and these guys aren't quite back yet, when does Florida state, they don't have a buy coming up, do they? Cause I no, guess they had they a buy had before a, Memphis. They had a buy before Memphis. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do think this is going to be the healthiest Cal has looked. So I think there's, um, I I'm curious if there's going to be some line changes. I guess you were already thinking about it during warmups, like yeah. right as we get close. Cause I do think there's going to be some Cal guys. I'm curious how many, but I think, you know, like for example, I think Ott and Reese will be a full go. That's my expectation. Um, because I, I do think there was some holding outs against San Diego state because they felt like they could. And it's probably one of the weaker San Diego state teams I can remember. But um, I felt like in the second half, the offense found a rhythm. Real, I mean, it was so sloppy, but, I mean, they had to drop pass. It could have gone 38 toward the end of the game. It felt like they found what I was hoping they would show up with in week one. So, I mean, that then again, it's Florida State. Every Cal fan is worried that this is the game Florida State looks like Florida State. Because if they do, that's fair. I don't think Cal fans are going to be too – that changes level of confidence. But um, – you know, if it's, if it's not yet, uh, so I do think if those tackles aren't back, you know, it's going to be hard for, you know, to kind of, uh, it's going to be hard to fix things against a team like Cal, especially if, if they're going out with DJ, uh, and if he's not being, if he's not getting protected and they're not running the ball that well. So I have a good feeling for Cal, but, um, yeah, I am sure it'll be a very close game. No doubt. Mike, really appreciate it, man. It's, it's- Mighty enjoyable, and I hope everybody gives it a thumbs up and uh, and, and, and a nice comment on YouTube. And Mike, appreciate the time. I appreciate you, bud. Thanks for having me on. See you, buddy.